Okay, so I'm not going to ask you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there is a very good reason for that. I struggle with promoting myself. I'm a little bit of this. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing really well. If you are new here, my name is Lex Morningstar and this YouTube channel is about the 16 personality types in the human condition. And today I thought we would have a little bit of lighthearted fun by chatting about the kind of INFP stereotypes that we fit. So stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a special question just for you guys to answer. And I would love you to leave a comment in the comment section below to answer the question. I was actually originally going going to like pull out the little scenarios out of a hat but the thing is I couldn't find a piece of paper and the kids hide the pens so I'm just gonna do it the way that I usually do it so I hope you can relate to these if you don't don't sweat it this is just for a little bit of light-hearted fun the first one is apologizes when being walked into and other things that the INFP is not responsible for. This one I 100% am guilty of. A common scenario is that when I'm taking my son to daycare, I'll be walking in one direction and somebody else will be coming in the direction towards me. And what ends up happening is that I will end up moving to the side just because like you know I'm trying to be polite like you know and then I end up apologizing and I, I don't think that this is necessarily a good thing like I would rather try not to do that because obviously we are both entitled to be walking on the footpath the interesting thing is though is that the other person just doesn't really care doesn't show me the same kind of humbleness back so like I'm the only one who puts myself to the side and says excuse me because I have manners and because I don't like to upset anyone I suppose I don't want to come across like I'm a burden to others or that I'm bothering others then I'm there just minding my own business and doing my own thing there is another aspect though that annoys me about this particular thing and that is there's a high school that I have to walk by and the kids just don't care like you're walking you got your pram push chest troll or whatever you want to call it and they're all crowding around and they just don't move and like you have to really like speak up and tell them could you please move over and like walking through here mum with a toddler and a primary school kid I can kind of understand why now I didn't really have many friends in high school <laughs> anyway these things can also translate to like in your workplace or at your school or whatever where you might not have done anything wrong or like you feel like you might be in the way of someone and you just automatically apologize because it's like a it's a default I'm trying not to bother anyone <laughs> I think that's the best way I can describe it so moving on to the next one messy messy yes I'm guilty of this INFP stereotype like probably the most out of all of them if you are my mother-in-law or my mother you would nod your head in absolute agreement to this point here um, when I was a kid I would come home from school and back then I had uniforms for when I was at my primary school intermediate and high school and my mum would get me as soon as I would get home to fold my uniform and put it at the end of my bed or on my dressing table uh, now this particular thing I never carried on to adulthood with me my head is absolute organized chaos it's just everywhere but hey as they say a messy environment means a creative mind and I, look I'm just going to hold on to that kind of belief my kitchen is like pretty much in a mess the whole time the lounge is always in a mess I mean look you know a little bit of discretion for me I have kids and they are messy and this is the part of like parenthood that that I can't do naturally is the cleaning and the organizing no like no. I actually think I get this characteristic from my dad because my dad like loses his keys all the time his wallet so my dad's an engineer so he's incredibly smart and he's also creative and I think maybe I get a little bit of that from him self-promote or boast okay so I'm not gonna ask you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel and there is a very good reason for that 
I struggle with promoting myself, okay? I feel incredibly, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but um, shy or I don't know what it is. When other people might talk up my accomplishments or discuss with me the things that I like to do or the things that I'm pretty good at, I just can't bring myself to talk about how I'm good at something. Like, I don't know why. And like, I can't ask you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I just can't, like, I feel like I can't really boast. I don't know. I don't even know if that's what it is. I don't think it's boasting because I think it's great when people can talk about the things that they're proud about and ask people to follow them. Like, I think that cool, like, but I can't do that. <laughs> like, there's just big block. I just, I just can't. I do wonder, though, if it's because of my Kiwi upbringing, like part of the New Zealand culture is that we don't brag about the things that we accomplish or the things that we're good at. We just let the craft or whatever we're good at speak for itself. And then we take more of a humble approach with those things. I just prefer to be humble in what I do. I prefer to let what I do speak for itself. I do immensely enjoy discussing my passions with people that I'm close to because I know that they're not going to think that I'm being boastful or anything like that. And I like to be able to have in-depth conversations surrounding other people's passions. And yeah, that's like one of the talking points that I do like. But when it comes to like expressing myself to the outside world, aka like all of you guys, I can't ask you to subscribe and that's probably why you'll never hear me say subscribe to my channel press the notification bell because i just can't bring myself to so the next one is struggles to say no and overcommits this one i'm particularly guilty of because i find myself a very motivated person especially when I'm passionate about something or I could see that something might be quite fruitful or in line with my introverted feeling. So if I've been given X, Y, and Z to handle, I'm going to say yes to everything and then load my plate up and then get burnt out. That's my style. Or another alternative is that I'll just say yes to something I don't really want to do and then I kind of dig myself a hole because I'm kind of thinking oh I don't actually want to do that and now I have to tell the person I'm sorry I can't and that's incredibly difficult as I'm sure most of you INFPs know that facing up to those kind of conflicts can be difficult because you don't want to hurt the other person you care so much about how the other person might feel that you don't want to be the cause of their pain so <laughs> that's pretty much the crux of it this could especially be true at like a learning institute or at work when you're higher up asks you to commit to certain things and some of those things you might not be able to do and you might find it quite difficult to say no to it because you could either fear what that other person might think or fear that you're going to disappoint them or you actually do think I could handle this like right at that particular moment I can handle this and then later on you have to reflect on it when you're in your little introverted mode and you're like no. Who else can relate to that one? I bet many of you could. But let's move on to the next one because we got to get through these. I'm a fist full of rock and a little pinch of fun. So the next one is study something that won't guarantee a job. I think that's like most millennials, to be honest. I think we're all like, yeah, I'm going to go to university and study philosophy. What a cool subject. But in reality, it's probably not very likely going to get you a job and I have been there and done that I'm telling you now which is why I have a huge student debt and there are things that I do regret <laughs> so I went to uni to study theatre studies and anthropology those were my two loves I really love sociology and the study of cultures so that one really stuck out to me I could see myself being like an ethnographer oh that was such the dream back then and of course the theatre studies I aced drama at high school and back then I really wanted to make that my career but then I kind of realized after a while uh, it's probably more of a 
a hobby, like join a theatre club, do theatre, or, you know, you could go down the Hollywood route, but that's that's like saying I'm going to be a famous singer. Like it's it can be pipe dreamy. Well, in my case, at least. Now, I really enjoyed studying these things. I taught my class. I had a really good time, but then it couldn't guarantee me a job. So I ended up dropping out, but it was to other things. It wasn't due to the fact that it wasn't going to get me a job or I, I kind of thought it wasn't going to get me a job. I think we all have either that one friend that studies the weirdest stuff and like does years of study in these like random subjects or we're that person. I mean how many times do we change the things that we want to do? How many times do we try something and we don't feel that it's a right fit so then we try something else and we do good at that one thing for a little while and then bounce to something else. I think it just really kind of is a bit of a blow when the thing that you really love to do might not guarantee your job but you really really love it and I think this is where you have to kind of come to a crossroads of like for instance James my partner he is a corporate musician and he's also a landscaper so he has to have these two things like this real reality based solid landscaping job that pays the bills and then being a corporate act that he can tap into his passion of singing and that too earns money but it's It comes in very sporadically, but then he has the landscaping that can really hold down life. This next one is hate math. This stereotype I fit to a T, like I've never been good at math. I failed it at high school. I can't do it now. Like James handles all the bills and all the like numeracies in our life because I can't like it does not connect the mathematical part of my brain is just like seriously underdeveloped that I don't even try anymore but yeah I think it comes back to a repetitive routine oriented um formula formulas if you will I don't even know what I'm talking about for me it felt repetitive when I was studying it at high school it felt like the the formula aspect I couldn't connect with so much. I preferred things that gave me creativity, things that I could explore outside of a box rather than inside of a box, which I think that's math. Math is everything that fits inside the box or a circle or a triangle. I did quite enjoy science though and I did really well in my science class, especially biology. I think science for me was more like goal oriented, like I had something specific that I was learning about, something that I could really grab, like a concept that I could really grab onto. Whereas with math, you know, math can apply to anything and everything. So for me, I was just like, well, where am I going with this? Like, I'm I'm inside a box and there's no reason for it. Like that's how it kind of felt like when I was trying to do math where I really didn't want to do it. <laughs> Can you relate to that one? Okay, so this one is emotionally reactive. Now being emotionally reactive can mean different things because you could be emotionally reactive in a passive way or in an aggressive way. There are many different ways that you can be emotionally reactive. And one of the stereotypes of the INFP is that we are essentially emos. We're emotional people. And I do fit the stereotype very much so. I do struggle with my mental health, so a lot of my emotional stability, or rather the lack thereof, comes from trauma, I suppose. So for me, I don't think it's as much to do with my INFP personality, or perhaps part of the reason why I did get the INFP personality type in the first place was partially because of past traumas. You know, those traumas may influence certain aspects of yourself like maybe you can't deal with criticism or you're a people pleaser because back when you were a kid you were abused you know something like that very broad general generalizations here but for me I feel like that the emotionally reactive part of it is more to do with my mental health and how I've dealt with things in the past but this emotional reaction is something that comes out passive aggressively and aggressively too sometimes I can be quite vocal about it and 
I'm very sensitive, so many different things can push my buttons. Like if I feel uncomfortable about something, it's going to push my buttons and I'm going to really feel it from my core. And sometimes it might just be a little bit over the top, like it's not rational. So therefore, you know, that's when we adopt certain techniques to calm down and think rationally about certain things but I I think for my initial reaction especially if something is going against my introverted feeling like inside if I don't if I value certain things or if I don't value certain things if those things don't align with my values yes stereotypically I'm going to feel emotional about it very much so and I'm going to have a reaction whether that be passive or aggressively a stereotypical Reaction to that might be the INFP writes a letter or writes a song or, you know, something where they can be creative with that feeling. Um, and I've done that many a times, written letters. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that about wraps up this video, but I do have one more scenario for you guys to answer in the comment section below, and that is jumps from project to project. Please tell me if this stereotype is something that you are notorious for, and if you do have other stereotypes, I'd really love to hear those as well. But for now, I hope you guys have a really good day, night, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you guys all again next time. Bye!